everyone. I'm Jane Gao. I'm an ecologist and wildlife biologist over in Orange County. First of all, I'd like to thank the City of Glendale's Community Services and Parks Trails and Open Space Program for inviting me over to talk about one of my favorite lectures, raptors. So we're over here in the beautiful Japanese tea garden and I'm going to talk today about birds of prey. They have those special hooked beaks and they have those big old talons in order to silently like swoosh down, grab them and just take them away. And here in Southern California, we have so many birds of prey. We have owls, we have falcons, we have kestrels, we have eagles even. And I'm just here to talk about just a, a few really, really cool species. So red-tailed hawks are actually one of the most prolific hawks here in Southern California. You see them literally everywhere. I've seen them in the mountains, I've seen them in the hills, I've seen them in the farmlands, they're everywhere. So they're actually generalist eaters. I've seen them eat snakes, gophers, birds, but whatever they can get, they will get. The way that you can actually tell um, that it's a red-tailed hawk is that they're medium-sized, so they're about like this big wingspan. Um, their tail is usually auburny to even like a cinnamon color. And the rest of their body is very brown. They have a couple morphs, so it could be like a darker morph or even a lighter morph. But in general, it's very much just shades of brown. And like most birds of prey, the female is bigger than the male. So the female might even be a lot like a lot bigger than the male. So they mate monogamously and every single spring, like this spring, we will be able to see them build their nests. Um, their nests are usually found in tall trees. It's usually three fourths the way up and it's made of branches and like twigs and things. So a clutch size is, you know, the amount of eggs per time that they try to hatch out. So that would mean like they're, they will try to hatch out one to three eggs in the springtime. And if that one didn't work, for instance, then the next time they will do another one to three eggs. So that would be their second clutch. So their clutch size is usually one to three chicks, depending. And their little chicks look a lot like cotton balls. They're, they're actually quite cute. So the Cooper's Hawk is a little bit smaller. You see them a lot around suburban neighborhoods, places where people tend to go, simply because we attract their main food sources. One big thing is we attract, you know, mice, rats, songbirds with, you know, our bird feeders hanging around. So that's what attracts them to their food. You see them everywhere in Southern California. They stay here over the winter. And kind of like red tails, they go to the same nest year after year after year. So the clutch size is actually a little bit bigger than the red tail hawks. It's maybe two to five eggs every single time. And their babies are also very, very cute, little cotton balls. They actually take only around one month to grow up. So by the time they hatch and just one month and they're already flying off. So the adults are actually much more blue. They're kind of like a dark blue color all over their head, all over their back. And their underside is a little more creamy and striped with dark brown stripes. Their eyes are actually really cool colored. It's red. But when they're babies, they're actually like darker brown. You can see that their head, their everything is just dark brown. Their front is still creamy and they still have the little stripes. Their eyes are yellow. And as they get older, they look more and more like an adult. So barn owls are about the size of like a tiny cat, right? What is very surprising though, is that they're only one pound. So you can literally just like pick them up. Um, they're pretty small. Everyone knows kind of their coloring. So it's a nice cute little apple shaped head. It's white and it has cute little brown speckles all over the back. They're also generalist eaters, but what's so different about them is that they are night hunters. So they love eating, you know, mice, voles, um, if they can get their hands on it, lizards, anything like that. They love human establishments, hence the name barn owl. So we'll see them in a lot of places where we're, we're in. So agricultural areas or parks sometimes. And something else that's really cool about them is that they can turn their heads 270 degrees. I wish I could do that, but you know, 
They have lopsided ears in order to help them with hunting. So one, one ear is a little bit higher than the other. And that way they can distinguish the sound because when the sound comes at you, it hits one ear first and then it hits the other ear. And that minuscule difference is what they use in order to hone in on their prey. So they actually eat their prey whole, unlike a lot of other birds of prey. They will just swallow it up. And what happens is it gets digested in their like gullet. And then there's bones and fur, and then they'll actually regurgitate it out. So sometimes if you're walking in the park or something, you'll see that, hey, there's an owl pellet. Um, I know a lot of classrooms right now have, their, the, have the kids um, dissect the little owl pellets to see, you know, what did the owl eat? Did it eat like a rodent? Did it eat a snake? What cool things did we find about it? What's so cool about uh, barn owls is also that they're excellent biological control. So that means in places like wineries, places where they have a lot of grapes and therefore a lot of rodents, instead of using a lot of pesticides, what we can do is make sure that the owl population is really high. That way the owl will take care of as many rodents as possible and it won't harm the environment in the same way that pesticides and herbicides do. They're also silent hunters, unlike a lot of other birds of prey. Reasoning for that is that the tips of their feathers is very um, highly specialized. That means that they cannot go out in water. So if it's a day that's raining, then you won't see any of them around. So a trade-off for being able to fly silently just means that they can't really hunt during rainy season as much. So last but not least, the turkey vulture. So these guys are also birds of prey, but what's so unique about them is that they don't actually hunt their prey. They're carry-on eaters. So carry-on means fresh kill. Instead of going out and hunting you know, animals, they actually will smell a carcass from miles away and they'll track all the way to it and feast. So turkey vultures are huge. The reason why they're called like turkey vulture is because they're the size of a turkey. So they're dark brown almost all over. And the only thing that is not dark brown is their head, which is very, very pink. And the reason it's pink is because it has no feathers. That way they could rip and tear into their carry-on, so their food, um, without getting their head stuck in there or getting it all like bloodied up. And they serve a very, very important ecological function simply because that way they are nature's recyclers they make sure that the nutrients get back into the earth. They also help in terms of stopping as much disease spreading. So even if the carry-on passed away due to um, diseases such as like botulism or any other, you know, bacteria infection, the turkey vulture has really, really acidic stomach acid that actually destroys the bacteria. That way it won't go on to infect you know, another creature. They have one of the most sensitive olfactory systems, so being able to smell um, in the entire you know, bird group. So you know, hawks and owls, all those guys, they have very good eyesight, but they have very, very bad um, sense of smell. And it makes sense a lot too, because the turkey vulture needs to be able to smell where its food's coming from. And a really cool but gross fun fact is that they will projectile vomit in order to, um, as a good defense mechanism. So if there's a bald eagle or something chasing after it, then it just projects vomits in its face and just scuttles away. So yeah, gross fun facts. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys so much for letting me talk about my favorite passion, which is birds of prey. So you can see them all around here in Southern California and in beautiful Brant Park. But next time you guys go on a hike, please take a pair of binoculars or just keep your eyes out and see what kind of birds of prey you can find.